In today's Fixed Gear Q&A, we'll talk about Alley Cat Races, Pursuit Frames, and my thoughts on those really low budget frames from Ally Express, plus more coming up. This Fixed Gear Q&A is brought to you by Wobby Cycles. For top tier, lightweight steel bikes, check out Wobby Cycles at the link at the top of the description. What's up, I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and subscribe for more Fixed Gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And we're going to be talking about a lot of components today. Feel free to check those out linked in the description at any point during this video. How does one get into Alley Cats and what's the best bike for an Alley Cat? Getting into Alley Cats is really simple. Assuming that you have Alley Cats in your area, all you really gotta do is actually show up. The best bike for an Alley Cat is whatever bike that you're fastest on while navigating in an urban environment, since most Alley Cats take places in cities. Some Alley Cats do require that you use a fixed gear bike though, so it really does depend on who's organizing the Alley Cats. On that same token, should I race my track bike or my steel bike in an Alley Cat? Again, whatever bike that you're fastest on and most comfortable on will be best. You can certainly ride your track bike in an Alley Cat, but I actually think that brakes make you faster because with sufficient stopping power, you can take more risks. So if you're faster on your track bike, ride that, but if you're faster on your steel bike, ride that. But regardless, I think it's a good idea to have brakes. 23 millimeters versus 28 millimeter tires. 28 millimeter tires all the way because wider tires are just more comfortable, they get less flats, and they are just as fast as skinnier tires under real world conditions. There's very little evidence to suggest that under real world conditions, riding out and on the the road that skinnier tires are faster than wider tires. You can check out a pretty extensive article that tests the speed differences between skinny tires and wide tires linked in the description, but pretty much wide tires are just better. Could you explain the advantages and disadvantages of rim styles, spokes, and hubs? There's three main types of rims. First is the box section rim, usually around 15 millimeters, and box section rims will give a springy and lively ride quality. In my experience, they haven't really been the best for super aggressive cornering though, so there is that compromise. Next up are the semi-aero wheels at around 25 millimeters to 30 millimeters in depth, and these are generally the most well-rounded wheels for daily use. They'll usually be the lightest type of rims while balancing durability, aerodynamics, stiffness, and cornering, and because of that they tend to be the most popular. Next up are the deep section rims or aero rims at around 40 millimeters to 80 millimeters and up. Generally speaking, these are going to be the most aerodynamic rims, and because they have a lot more material, they tend to be more durable, but all that material comes with a weight penalty. And because you can use shorter spokes with these rims, they do tend to make stiffer wheels. And for spokes, there's two main types of spokes, and they're both usually made out of stainless steel. The first more standard type of spoke are double-butted spokes, meaning that they're thinner in the middle and thicker at the ends, so that they are stronger and lighter compared to a straight gauge spoke, that is. And the second type of spoke are aero spokes. These have a flat profile for aerodynamic gains. But because of that, they do tend to be a little bit heavier. And for hubs, there's seal bearing hubs and loose ball bearing hubs, and then there's low flange hubs and high flange hubs. In addition to the rim, hubs will also determine how stiff or how lively a rim can be built because it changes the spoke length. With low flange hubs that use longer spokes, those wheels will tend to be more springy and lively, while higher flange hubs will tend to be stiffer because they use shorter length spokes. And in my eyes, sealed cartridge bearing hubs are just better than loose ball bearing hubs. The argument for loose ball bearing hubs and having to deal with all that maintenance of repacking is that when they're packed well, there will be less friction in the bearings compared to a sealed cartridge bearing hub. But unless you're racing at a super high level where every fraction of a second counts, you won't notice a difference. Sealed bearing hubs, on the other hand, will spin smoothly for thousands and thousands of miles. I've never personally replaced my cartridge hub bearing bearings and they still run buttery smooth. I'm looking for a good pursuit frame for a good price. Any thoughts? My first thought is whenever you say good or budget, I don't know what that means in terms of you. I don't know you. For future reference and to get a better answer for me, please do quantify what your budget is and what kind of characteristics that you're looking for in a frame set. With that said, here are some good 
pursuit frames. First are Break Break 17s, the Karma and the Transfer. The Transfer is a pretty gradual pursuit and it's not as intense as the Karma. Although it's discontinued, the Event of Matero Low is also a pursuit frame, which also tends to be on the gentler end of pursuit slopes. Next up are the BLB London Low Pro and the La Piovra. These frame sites will have pretty aggressively sloping tubes. And if you want a really aggressively sloping pursuit frame, there is of course the Affinity Low Pro, which actually comes in at a very reasonable price. Again, I don't know what a good price means, but there's of course the low pursuit frame and it's a good price if you like custom handmade bikes and you have $2,300 lying around. So when you're choosing a pursuit frame, first determine how aggressive of a sloping top tube you want and also do you want a steel bike or do you want an aluminum bike? There's a whole lot of different types of pursuit frames. Any thoughts on Ally Express fixed gear frames? So Ally Express has the Visp. Do you remember those things? Apparently they're still a thing. Some people on bike forums around seven to eight years ago bought them and overall they were like, yeah, they're kind of heavy, but they're really cheap. And they said that they were fine for the price seven to eight years ago. So things have changed since then. And there's a lot more better options these days. Ally Express also has the Tsunami frame set, which actually looks pretty cool in my opinion. It's made out of aluminum, it has smooth welds, and that paint job is pretty sick and looks high quality. It looks high quality. I've never seen one in person. I've never met anybody that's ridden one. It's just so much of an unknown. And then there's also the Lust from Ally Express, and it looks pretty sweet, but looks can be deceiving. Ally Express is not a bike shop. It's a gamble. The fact of the matter is that you can get a pretty dang high quality bike for only a couple hundred dollars. Heck, the Kilo TT frame set is only a hair over $200, which is around the same price as these sort of sketchy Ally Express frames. But if you want an aluminum frame, it's only a slightly different story. Seven to eight years ago, there weren't very many options for really low budget aluminum frame sets. But now we've got the Event in Cordoba for around $290 and it comes with a car carbon fork as opposed to Ally Express's full aluminum forks. And then there's also the state black label version two, tapered head tube, full carbon fork, only $300. And if you buy a state, I hope it doesn't come to this, but they do seem to have pretty good customer service. If you get a frame set that's misaligned or something from Ally Express, who do you contact? And then there's the Dolan Precursor, which velodromes all around the world use for rental bikes just because they're so consistent and reliable for only $350. Again, not that much more than those Ally Express frame sets. It's a gamble with quality control. On top of that, they don't even have geometry charts, so what kind of bike exactly are you buying? Just don't cut corners and get something that will be safe to ride that a lot of people recommend and have experience with. Would you recommend the OTA crank set? Also from Ally Express. Firstly, this is one of the ugliest crank sets that I've ever seen. It looks like a billboard. A billboard with really bad English. To its merit though, it is 144 BCD, so you can use high quality chain rings and it's maybe marginally stiffer than a comparable 130 BCD crank set of the same quality. It has a CNC chain ring, so it can't be that bad. And it's made in Taiwan, and Taiwan has some of the best bicycle manufacturing infrastructure. So it seems fine until you take a closer look and they don't have the appropriate bottom bracket specs for the crank set. You're going to have to guess what the correct bottom bracket spindle length is. AliExpress, it's a gamble. And if you lose on the gamble, then you're just going to have to end up buying the good thing in the first place. And then you'll have the good thing along with the trash thing. And I'm totally sympathetic to anybody who's considering these parts because I used to have absolutely no budget for my bike parts. It's okay to make compromises, but don't cut corners. Case in point, my Sugino 75s. What do you think of a custom painted brandless fixed gear with reliable parts since brandless is usually deemed as a bad bike? Are brandless frames okay to use? It really comes down to where is this bike from and how good is the quality control on the frame? There can be usable and pretty decent brandless frames. Heck, a lot of companies will just buy their frames from a factory that makes these generic frames and then just slap their logos on it. Again, it's probably fine, but a lot of it really does come down to where is that frame from? And is that particular frame good in terms of quality control? You can totally use it, just know that like with other bike frames that are branded, there's good brands and there's 
Cruddy brands. And you gotta do your homework to determine what you got. When will you be doing another century? So I have this idea for a century video. Please do let me know in the comments whether you would be interested in seeing it. And while we're on the subject of low quality bikes, I want to get a Walmart bike and see if I can ride a century with it and to see if the bike can even make a hundred miles. It will not be fun for me, but it will be at least entertaining for you. So let me know if you'd like to see a Walmart century in the comments. Do you plan on hosting any rides? I've hosted one ride in the past and it was a lot of fun and like 20 some odd people came out. And I would like to host another ride, I just haven't really gotten around to organizing and planning and announcing and all of that stuff, which I don't like. This is kind of like a, an idea that might be out there, but would anybody in the Sacramento area like to ride a century with me? Heck, we can combine the group ride idea with the Walmart century thing, and would anybody like to do a Walmart century with me? I'm only half joking when I'm asking that, so let me know in the comments if you want to meet up and do a Walmart century. That's it for this Fix Your Q&A. Question of the day. What videos do you want to see me make in the month of November? Let me know in the comments and I'll make that video if enough people want to see it. Speaking of November videos, we've got a few bike reviews coming up with State and possibly a Venton. But out of all the bikes that I've reviewed, Wobbies have been my favorite because they're made out of really lightweight top shelf steel that gives the bikes a nice springy and lively ride quality while still maintaining the right amount of stiffness for sprinting. Wobbies are spec'd with no nonsense but high quality components and unlike a lot of other complete bikes, nothing on the Wobby really needs to be replaced out of the box. Heck, my Wobby special right here I want to upgrade some things, but the stock components are just perfectly solid. So my Wobby Special is mostly stock. My 58 centimeter Wobby Special has a full steel frame set and it has aluminum components. It weighs in at 17.6 pounds, which is kind of insane for a steel bike. It almost sounds too good to be true, but it's not. So if you're looking for your end all be all steel fixed gear for street riding, do check out Wobby Cycles at the link at the top of the description. And if you haven't ridden your bike yet, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.